Well, Mother Nature only gave me a one day pass, but it was enough to make some really awesome finds. Well, welcome to Finding America. It is really great to see you here. Well, unfortunately, Chris had to go out of town this past weekend, but I had another way to get Chris in this week's video. Check out this very cool photo. Yep, that's our buddy Chris, when he was just 12 years old with his very first White's metal detector, and that was his puppy, Lily. Now, he still owns that metal detector, and I just had to share that really cool photo with you. And all I can think is, man, where does the time go? Well, I was actually worried I wasn't going to be able to put out a full video this week. Now, you didn't know it, but during the filming of our last video in that Civil War hunt in the woods, a huge snowstorm hit us, and we had to race to get back to our cars and head back home. And I ended up being snowed in from last Sunday until just this past Saturday. And to make matters worse, we had another snowstorm that was going to blow in in the late afternoon on Saturday as well. But Mother Nature melted the snow by Saturday morning and gave me a one-day pass. I had six hours to get out there and see what I could come up with. Well, I detected my rear off, and it definitely paid off. Well, I just wanted to show you this uh, new permission I got. Now... This has kind of an interesting history. It's been a church for a very long time, about the last 60, 70 years. But prior to it being a church, this was actually a uh, school for black children. Down in this area, and it's a very interesting area. It's a very old part of town here. And one cool thing about it, it still has the original outhouses. That is the outhouse for women. And then you go up there and that is the outhouse for the men up those stairs. It's just on the side of the school and the church here. It's just a really cool example of sort of a backcountry uh, old school house and church. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna go up these steps yeah, they're pretty solid. <laughs> I was a little worried about that. And you come up here and there's the old uh, the old outhouse. Yeah, it looks like the doors. Yeah, there's your uh, <laughs> there's your base for the toilet seat. I'll be darned. Yeah, I can see I got a got a dugout down there, but been a little while since anyone's probably used it but it's pretty cool to see these old outhouses still still hanging around here so I got some nice wooded area to kind of poke in pretty thick up there a lot of briars and brambles but pretty cool and uh, just thought I'd show you where I'm gonna poke around doesn't have a huge area to hunt but it's got enough and they probably didn't have a whole lot of money back then but Maybe we'll find a coin or two and maybe maybe an interesting relic. Well, I'm using, uh, I'm just in Park 2, small coil, five tones. Uh, just getting a feel for the place. A lot of garbage here, but got a 14 dug down. Thought it was just going to be another piece of garbage in it. Yeah, it still could be. But it's got something uh, embossed into this. I really can't tell what it is. I'll have to get it cleaned up. I think I can make out the word Bill, B-I-L-L. -L. That's about all I can make out. It's kind of an unusual shape too. I don't know what that was. I'll get it home, get it cleaned up, and uh, we'll figure out, hopefully we'll figure out what it is. Well, I am up on the hillside above the cutout, uh, above the schoolhouse. Just over by the outhouse, and I was getting a 16, 17 sitting on the dug down. And, yep, I got a spoon. <laughs> got to get one of these almost every time. But it's just going to be stainless, not too old.
but uh, it's always nice to see a spoon in the video. Well, I moved on about five feet. Got a single in this hole, but when I ran my pinpointer over here, it went off. And now I can see why. What are the odds, huh? Another spoon. Ooh, this one's much fancier than the last one. Still stainless, though. But <laughs> I'm not sure why anyone wants to sit around and eat some pudding next to the outhouse, but I'm finding the spoons. Well, I moved over this direction. The problem I'm having with this site is they graveled like every square inch around this old building. So that's pretty difficult digging in. So I wanted to kind of make my way over here. Uh, so I'm making my way over here to the women's outhouse. They have women painted on the building, in case you're wondering how I knew it was a woman's. But there's an old tree stump here. They might have uh, sort of gathered here. And I did get a signal here. I went down and uh, got a 21-22. Nothing spectacular, but it is an old emblem, probably for a hood. But uh, it's either for a Ford but or a Dodge. Pretty cool. And uh, see what else I get here. This is going to be probably 60s. Well, I got kind of a cool little signal here is a uh, 19, sometimes a 21 dug down and uh, I got a pocket knife. So I don't think it's going to be as cool as the pocket knife from the last video, but very cool. Definitely has some age to it and all there. Very nice. So I'm happy to get that. Well, just uh, two feet from the pocket knife. Got a 19 signal I dug down. Uh, nothing outstanding, but it looks to be uh, an old wristwatch, I think. Looks like a lady's wristwatch. Not much left of it, but you can see some of the gears here still. Pretty cool little find. Well, this signal, I was kind of hoping I would find something like this out here. This area is a really old. It's uh, where the original town uh, sprang up, and then it moved a few miles away when the railroad came in. So I was kind of hoping for some early items, because it was around in the late 1700s even. And I did find a fired pistol ball right next to the outhouse. And it was giving me a 13. It was about four inches down. So very happy to see that. Might have a chance for something even older here. Well, I'm, uh, there's still targets here, but I have a couple other spots I want to hit before the end of the day, and I'm trying to race against a snowstorm that's coming again. I've been snowed in since last Sunday, and today's Saturday, first time I've been able to get off the mountain. So I wanted to show you this, because this outhouse is much better preserved, and I hope you can see that, they originally had it painted women. I don't know if you caught that in my other clip, but it's pretty cool. But this one is uh, actually in pretty good shape. I'm going to show you what the conditions were if you had to go and use the bathroom back then. That's what you sat on. A little wood box. <laughs> so, yeah, you had to be careful in the summertime. Snakes would get in here and wasps and hornets would build nests up here. So, it did have a it didn't have electricity, it had a light up here. Single light bulb, probably had a little pole chain. But there you go. That's an original Tennessee outhouse here. And that's pretty much what a, a lot of people in East Tennessee had. And it took a long time to get plumbing to some areas. Well, unfortunately, I could tell that site wasn't really paying off for me that day, but I am definitely going to go back there and poke around some more. Now I had about four hours left, so I decided to head over to another permission that I had across town. Well, I uh, made one more stop before this snowstorm hits us. Uh, decided to put on the 15 inch coil. Now this is where I uh, filmed the video called Target Rich uh, War Tales, with uh, part of that was done here too. And 
Signals are really hard to come by. I found the Coca-Cola knife, the Barber Dines, the Sterling Silver Butterfly. So it's been hunted hard, but I'm going over and I got a nice signal. I cleared out uh, a hoe blade, a blade to a garden hoe, and that freed up a signal right here. I'm going to show you it. Check it out. Some kind of old utensil. I haven't even, uh, all I, I got a glimpse of it and I said, well, I'm going to grab the camera and we're going to try to get this out. Boy, that does look pretty old. Let's see. Let's see if I can uh, loosen it up here. Try to work around the edges. I don't want to hit it. But I think I should be able to get it out now. Yep. Oh, wow. Check it out. It's a fork. I don't find too many forks. Boy, that is an old one. That is cool. That is really nice. Definitely, uh, definitely an older one. It's got a great pattern on the handle. Hopefully, I'll be able to date this one. I'm thinking at least 1930s. It could be earlier. I definitely see a, a mark on it. So, I'll get it home and clean it up. It's kind of unusual. Such a long handle and a short fork at the end. But that's great. Uh, that was about seven inches down. Well, I guess Chris and I did a pretty darn good job of hunting that spot because that was the only thing that I found that was worth filming. Well, I still had three hours left, so I decided to leave that spot and head over to one of my favorite spots, the old Millhouse neighborhood. And as it turned out, that proved to be a very good decision. Well, this thing was giving me a 21, 22, nothing special, but kind of cool. Uh, old bottle cap, some kind of liquor bottle. It says Old Crow on both sides of it. It definitely looks old. I just thought I'd show it to you. And uh, I'm going to keep on going here. Well, next thing I got was a really strong 23. I figured it was a Coke can or something, but actually turned out to be a pretty cool uh, clock frame with some of the gears still on it. So some small clock could be an alarm clock, could be a mantle clock. More than likely a mantle. But definitely pretty old, and uh, that's pretty awesome. Well, I might have something here. Uh, it's giving me a beautiful high tone, 31 to 33. Dug down about five inches, and this popped out. Take a look at that. Now, I have been working on it a little bit because I just thought maybe it was just a piece of iron in a rusty piece, but as I clean it, I'm starting to see something that's crossed here. It might be an eagle at the top. I don't know if it's like a military insignia. I can see some kind of circle behind. The, it sure looks like cross sabers. You can almost see the sword handle there. But I'm going to have to clean it. Might have to dip this in apple cider vinegar. Here's the back side. So it might be some type of military collar insignia. Like a little threaded post right there. I don't know, but it's pretty darn cool. And I will get it cleaned up and we'll get a better look at it, hopefully. But I am... Uh, oh. That's going in the fragile box. That could be something pretty cool. Well, another high tone 2324 and another clock frame and gear. I tell you, must be the day for it. <laughs> well, I will keep on going. Uh, definitely some nice big older targets, so hopefully something interesting pops out. Well, I was chasing a 16 signal here. Kind of elusive, turned out to be some type of foil. But something else popped out that was kind of cool and I wanted to show you. Check that out. That is the very top to a cork bottle. And it broke off here. But yeah, that's a pretty old bottle there. Well, this is pretty cool. Uh, got a 13 signal, dug down, and got this uh, piece of scrap aluminum. But I cleared that out, rechecked the hole. There was still another 13 just off to the side of it. So I dug down and check it out. 
it's a handle it's not complete but it looks to be really old and oh yeah boy that was beautiful i don't know i'm thinking it was a well, obviously a spoon or a fork but that is old probably early 1900s could go back i don't know it could be late 1800s that's a great piece but it's got a real nice floral pattern up here so i'll get it cleaned up give you a look at it but uh oh i like that that's a nice piece Well, uh, I just want to let you know what I'm hunting in. Uh, I've just got this in part two, uh, just with five tones. Pretty much a uh, stock setup, running sensitivity at 23. I like to run it pretty high with the small coil. And as long as I'm not getting any interference or instability, uh, I run it as hot as I can to go as deep as I can. Now this one was giving me an 18 to 19, kind of hoping for an Indian head. But uh, as you can see, it was pretty deep, seven inches or so. And I finally popped out, and I think this is going to be a lipstick, uh, I'm sorry, a lipstick tube case. <laughs> and, yeah, I think so. I don't know if it's going to have anything on it. Whoa, check it out. Look at the design on that. Oh, that's beautiful. It's going to be uh, early Art Deco. I'm going to put this teens, 20s. That is really, wow, look at the design. This is going to be a really beautiful one. I like taking these old cosmetic products. Some of them are just amazing, the design. But I'll get that cleaned up and get you a better look at it, but what a beauty. Well, check that out. That thing is extremely ornate, and it does have a maker's name on the center. I can't make it out. Uh, underneath it says USA, I believe, but I'll get it home. I'm probably gonna put this in the apple cider vinegar. It'll clean this old brass r really, really nicely. Well, I'm still going along here, and oh my gosh, I got something really cool again. This was giving me a 23. It was pretty far down, six, seven inches. First thing I saw was this big piece of crock pottery. So that was pretty cool, but then I noticed something next to it, and look at this. It is a small, I don't know if it's a case or a compact. I don't, I've never seen a compact this shape, but check it out though. I have both halves. It's amazing. Beautiful, beautiful piece. Very ornate. Now I'm going to get this uh, sprayed down, brushed off real quick. I'll give you a better look. But boy, this is going to be beautiful once I get it cleaned up, once I get home. Uh, definitely uh, late 1800s, early 1900s. Great, great piece. And I'll be right back. I'm going to get it rinsed well, off. I'll tell you, this is a beautiful, beautiful piece. Look at this. Oh, that's just unbelievable. The other side is pretty much identical. But look at that. Now, I don't know if it was a... Uh, what exactly it was. I got something round right there. It's kind of rusted to it. But probably some kind of uh, makeup or pocket mirror. I don't know. But it's gorgeous and uh, very old. This one was giving me a 14, dug down, and uh, this is how I saw it when I got it and I wiped it off. I'm like, huh. And I flipped it over and wiped it off and check it out. It's an old printing plate. And uh, I should be able to read the few words that are on it. It's still in pretty good shape. So very cool. I really enjoy finding these old printing plates. Well, I just dug that printing plate right there. I moved down here and got a 15, a little difficult to get. I think it was on edge. And check it out. I pulled another piece of it out. Uh, it doesn't have text. This is uh, some kind of illustration. I'm not quite sure what it is. Maybe, uh, <laughs> I ain't got a clue. <laughs> well, I'll clean it up and show it to you. And I'm just gonna kind of poke around here a little bit more, see if there's any other pieces of it. But that's pretty cool. Well, that's where I got the first piece of printing plate. That's where I got the second. Moved over here, got a 12, and I got a real, tiny little piece of the printing plate so we'll see if there's any more here but who knows maybe I can put it together piece by piece well 
Got a 1920 signal dug down, got another section of printing plate. Someone must have just been sitting here hammering that thing to pieces. But, uh, yet another one. Well, I was combing this area where we got the printing plate. I got him over here, got a 19 and sometimes I have 20. And I see a penny down in the soil. Now, there's a little chance it could be an Indian, but it's more than likely going to be a uh, Lincoln weedy, but I don't know. Let's see. Oh, it's not. It's a foreign coin. Holy cow. Wasn't expecting that. Sure is. Let's see what I got here. Let me get a little, little pants wipe. Oh, wow, this is an oldie. Uh, it's a Canadian penny, and it's gonna be old. Well, there it is. It's an early one, 1935, I believe. I left my magnifying glass at home, but uh, I think that's what it says. But very cool, I'll get this cleaned up. That was, a, <laughs> that was totally unexpected. Well, I didn't have much time left as the clouds began moving in. And that's when I got a slamming high tone. And it turned out to be an absolutely amazing find. I'll tell you what, wow. I mean, I just got this little bit of time to come out and hunt and I think it just paid off. Oh boy, getting a 36, 37. And in my mind, I'm like, yeah, it's gotta be a silver dollar. But don't worry, it's not silver. Uh, but it's something really cool. I had to go through this gravel, really work through it. I felt it as I pried it up and I felt it with my hand. And here's the imprint of it. And check this out. It's like a giant shield. Uh, don't know what's on the other side. I can see uh, lettering at the top here. All right, let's go. Oh, baby. What the heck is that? Oh my gosh, it still has some of the enamel inlay. In UA. Oh my gosh, look at that thing. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to come right back. I want to brush this off. It looks to be really cool. Wow, really old. Oh, that was awesome. All right, I'll be right back. Well, check this out. This. It says NMA, and that stands for National Motorist Association. It has the wheel and tire of a teen's 20 car here with the, with the wings on either side. And here it has the spread wings of an eagle, and it says Dayton Automobile Club. Now these are awesome. These would have gone on the license plate tag frame, and it would have stood above the plate. And that is so cool. That's pretty sure that's where it went on the vehicle, but wow. I'm going to just leave it like this. There's just a tiny bit of red enamel here still, a little bit of the blue and white. But is that not a very, very cool find? Wow. Ah, very happy with that. So cool. Well, sometimes you can go out for six hours and find absolutely nothing. And sometimes you go out for six hours and it's a jackpot. Luckily for me, it was a jackpot this time. And I really hope you enjoyed watching this hunt. Now, don't go anywhere just yet because I have some amazing historical photos inspired by one of the finds from this hunt. And they're coming up in just a few seconds and I think you'll really enjoy them. And remember, it's history that makes a find a treasure. And I cannot wait to see you back here next week on Finding America.